Hi everybody! Um, I really hope you can see us, our internet's a little bit dodgy today. Welcome to Easter Messy Church! Yay! So normally we'd have Messy Church at church and we would do so many fun activities and we can't go to church so we've tried to do some activities um, here ready for you to do in your home so we've done it in our home so you can do it in your home and i hope that you really enjoy doing it there is going to be some messy stuff fingers crossed so mums dads grandparents beware it wouldn't be messy church without messy church well mess so we're really glad that you could join us um, and we hope that you enjoy doing some of the bits and bobs what we're planning on doing is doing it in two sections because we don't want you to get too bored doing too much in one go um, and we, we're going to probably need a drink halfway through all this chitty chattering. Um, we've got activities for the young children and we've got activities for the older children. Nobody will be missed out and do you know what if you want to do the if you, the older children want to do the younger activities as well that's fine because no one's going to know because you're going to be at home doing it. So the story is all about Easter and we are going to talk about communion and the last supper which is where communion comes from so we're going to be doing goblets and things like that and bread and wine um, but first before we go any further i've got a special message from somebody who can't be in my lounge because oh, we're all self-isolating aren't we so here's a very special message i hope you can hear it i'm going to come a bit closer Reverend Janet, it's great to join you, and um, I'm so glad Beth is doing Messy Church online, and I'd like to share a prayer with you. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for each other and the miracle of social media that can keep us in touch. Thank you, Jesus, you are our good shepherd. Thank you that you care for us. Help us when we're frightened to know that you're with us. Be the shepherd that leads us through good times and bad times. Help us to remember that you are in front of us, behind us, to our left and to our right. We pray for all the people trying to help others at this time. Help us to be kind as well. And help us to celebrate this weekend with you to say thank you for your love for us, for dying for us, and for the victory of the cross. Be with our mummies and daddies, our grandmas and grandpas, our friends near and far, and help them to know that we're thinking of them. And Lord, bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that was a lovely message. I hope everybody heard that. Um, if not, we can try and play it again later. Let us know if you can hear it or not. Maybe we'll play it again in the second section soon. Right, we've got a story. The Last Meal. And this is taken, well, actually, four of the apostles talk about this. Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. On the day before the Passover, Jesus told Peter and John to prepare a meal. But where shall we eat? They asked him. As you enter Jerusalem, replied Jesus, you will meet a man carrying a water jar. He will take you to a house with an upstairs room. Prepare everything for us there. That evening before the meal, Jesus knew that the disciples had been quarrelling amongst themselves about which one of them was best. So Jesus calmly took a basin of water and he began to wash their feet. Peter was shocked. I can't let you wash my feet. I want you to follow my example, said Jesus. Whoever wants to be great in the kingdom of God must learn how to serve others as I am serving you. And there he is washing the feet, do you see? Then they sat down to eat. And during the meal, Jesus said, one of you is going to betray me. One of you that's eating with me now, Peter whispered to John, ask him who it is. And John did. And Jesus replied, the one I give this bread to. 
and then he gave each one of them a piece of bread dipped in herbs. So still they did not know. But later on, John remembered that Jesus had given the first piece to Judas and had said to him, go and do what you have to do. None of the others realised at the time what this had meant. The disciples thought that Jesus was telling Judas, who looked after the money, to go and buy more food. They saw Judas leave the room and they knew it was night. And then Jesus promised the disciples that God's spirit would always be with them and not to be afraid. He knew that this would be the last meal he shared with them. He took a piece of bread and he thanked God for it and he broke it into pieces. This is my body, he said. Like this bread, I will be broken. I will die for you. So do this in remembrance of me. And then he lifted a cup of wine, thanked God again and passed it around. This is my blood, he said, and it will be spilled for many people. Drink it in remembrance of me. We shall not drink together again until we are in God's kingdom. So Jesus knew that he was going to die. And he took, excuse me guys, I'm very sorry about that. So here we have the bread and the wine. Now as Methodists, we don't drink wine. Um, we drink grape juice instead. This is Ribena. So he said to them, take this bread and share it. And he broke it and he blessed it and he gave it to them. And the same with the wine. He said, take the wine this is my blood. And then he shared it with them. Do it in remembrance of me. So tonight we're going to be talking a lot about what happened in that story. We're going to be talking about the bread and the wine, the feet washing, um, and all the other bits that go along with the Easter story. Excuse me, sweetie, I'm just going to pop that back. Thank you very much. There we go. Right. Now, the Reverend Janet sent us something else to read about Passovers because Passovers, which is what Jesus was celebrating then, that's where they had the special meal because it was Passover meal. So Janet has sent this for me to read out. Jesus was celebrating the Jewish, Jewish festival of Passover with his friends and the Jewish people still celebrate Passover now. They remember when the people of Israel were rescued from Egypt when Moses helped them to lead them out of slavery into freedom. So Passovers can be like a birthday. We look back and we remember and we give thanks for the day of your birth. And we say thank you for today, celebrating the fact that we've reached another milestone. And we look forward to many happy returns, so more birthdays to come. Passover was looking back to celebrate and give thanks to God for his acts of power in freeing the slaves. Giving thanks for today because God has been with us and through all the people with the tough times, well, they were still together. Looking forward to the day when the Messiah would come and God would bring back the kingdom. So Jesus surprised everyone at Passover, something they had done over and over and over again. And he said, well, I'm the one that you've been waiting for. I am the Passover lamb. When we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we do something similar. We look back and we remember that Jesus died for us, to free us from sin, and he rose again to give us life. And we say thank you. We celebrate it today. We're together as a family of God around the table, and that God gives us the food to eat and share. And we look forward to when Jesus will come again, saying thank you that we have tasted, sorry, we have shared a foretaste, like an appetizer, a small glimpse into what heaven will be like. Because heaven is a party. And remember, it was a meal. They sat around the table. They sang psalms and songs. They ate lamb and their flatbreads. And they probably drank quite a lot of wine. It was a joyful, happy celebration. Okay, so thank you very much to, for Janet for that. That's smashing. Okay, so we've, we've been having lots of fun, haven't we? Because everything that we've got ready... For messy church today we did yesterday so yesterday we we were just crafting and crafting and crafting it felt like that anyway we got quite mucky right so so I've left the salt down in the fridge would you go and get it for me please thank you the first thing 
I thought we could do was make some goblets out of either clay or salt dough. Now I haven't got any clay and because we're all locked in and we can't go to the shops, I thought, what can I do? So I made it from some salt dough. Salt dough is very easy as long as you've got the ingredients. You need flour, salt, water. Oh, thank you. Don't squish it. Squishing it. So we used, do you remember? We had one cup of flour. How many cups of salt? That was, sorry, it wasn't. It was two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and three quarters of a cup of water. And, and you stir it all together. And you can use, oh, look at this. There we go, let's see. It's lovely and squishy and pliable. Right. Would you like to make something while we're talking? There you go, you have it. You can make anything you want. Okay, you can use it for the table there. Right, I've just got the clean table there. So we thought, what can we do to talk about the story? We made goblets. Now, the goblets were actually quite hard to make out of salt dough. They're a lot easier to make out of clay. Um, and in the end, we had to make them in pieces. So instead of making one goblet, because every time we made it, it collapsed on itself, we ended up making a bottom, a middle, and a top, okay? And then I glue gun them together. I've even got a cocktail stick in there because it kept falling down and that didn't work either, did it? We had a disaster. So we made all the pieces separately and then we put them in the oven. Um, so you're going to need your grown-ups to help you with this, especially the little ones. Do what you want with the salt dough. In, just play and enjoy it. You could make rainbows. You could make butterflies. We made a butterfly as well. Here we go. And there's our butterfly. So we made a butterfly out of salt dough. And we also made some crosses out of salt dough. So there's our crosses. So make what you want to. And then put it on a baking tray with some, some parchment or greaseproof paper, tin foil. We use tin foil. Um, when we made these cut bits, we actually put a ball of tin foil inside so it would keep its shape. Because otherwise it was just all squishy and collapsing all over the place, wasn't it? And then we put it in the oven on the lowest heat that you can possibly have. And we left it ooh, for a good couple of hours, actually. It, was, it seemed to take an awful long time, didn't it? And then when it all dried, we stuck it together, as you can see. It's got some bits of glue there. And then my very good helper painted this one gold. Um, you can see the glue wasn't terribly happy with that one. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit wonky. We're back to that wonky donkey story, aren't we? So it's a little bit, a little bit, um, oh, oh, it looks better. It look, if you look that way, it looks like it's standing up straight. So there we go. And you can make whatever you want. So you could make some crosses or some goblets. You could make a whole dinner if you wanted to. Um, and we say we made a butterfly. Because Easter, we have lots of symbols in Easter. And one of them is a butterfly. Because a butterfly represents new life. Because a butterfly isn't always a butterfly. It starts as a caterpillar. And the caterpillar transforms it goes to sleep for a very very long time and when it wakes up it comes out as a butterfly yeah. she's a little bit like jesus jesus almost the, the tomb that he went into after he died was a little bit like a cocoon and when he rose again he became the holy spirit so he's very much like a butterfly and we see butterflies for easter as new life same with chicks and eggs that's where they come from because eggs our new birth and the chickens come out don't they so that's why we have those at easter i don't know why we have rabbits at easter maybe someone can help me out with that one um so hello to those that are watching it's lovely to see you maybe amber can ask her parents because they're teachers they might know about the rabbits so that's one thing we can do today um especially for the younger children. And the thing is, it's so tactile. Anybody, even the big kids. So I want to see the big kids playing with the soldier. And we really want to see pictures as well. Of anything you've done, we would love to see a picture, please, in the comments afterwards. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be today. It could be next week or whenever. Um, 
but it is, it's just, it's very relaxing, blending with this, oh, lovely, so all over my hands now, okay, can I put this away now, do you want to talk or are you not talking at all, okay, I think we should, I think she's uh, pretending she's lost her voice, she's one shy, right, so, I'm going to put the salt dough under the table, hopefully the dog won't eat it, one of the other things that was in the story was feet washing. Actually, I do. I need your feet now. Look at these. Look at these horrible tipsies. Now, so Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. And this activity is really good for the little ones. Um, certainly, we, we have quite a few children of, of yay big. So I'm thinking sort of five under would really enjoy this. Although we quite enjoyed it too, didn't we? Although, trying to draw around somebody's feet without them giggling. This is our foot washing bowl. It's a paper plate because you can't have a messy church without paper plates, can you? And it was very easy. We took a paper plate. Oh, and a paper plate. Would you like to help me with this? Okay. You need to talk, please. Yes, thank you. Take a paper plate and some paint. She's here, so we've got some blue paint. There we go, blue paint, lovely. And in a minute, my helper is going to put down the salt dough, like I've asked her to. Thank you. Actually, go wash your hands, please. Thank you. She's made it too warm. That's the problem there. Because I need to draw around your feet, but I also need you to have clean hands, please. So it's very, very easy. All you need is a child with feet. A piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, and a pair of scissors. Okay. Hurry up! Your fans await you. I do apologise for the delay. And then a little scrap of material, because this is going to be our towel. Excellent. Can you please? I'm going to fold. I'm going to cheat. So I'm going to fold the paper in half and make it quicker. Right. Can you put your foot on there, please? So, oh, what a lovely foot! There we go. I don't know. Can you see that? Can we see? There we go. So I'm going to draw around a foot. Okay. Ready? It's going to tickle. Try not to giggle. She's going to giggle. I know she is. Oh, oh no! She's doing really well so far. Oh, she's holding it in. So I'm drawing around the toes. Then around the back of the foot. No, no, there we go. It's giggle. I knew there was going to be a squeak eventually. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, darling. Please, can you paint in the middle of that plate with this beautiful blue? There you go. Thank you, sweetheart. And while she's doing that, I'm going to cut out. This beautifully drawn foot, it's one of my better efforts as you can see. If you, if you use one of the grown up feet, you might need a bigger plate. But, um, what size feet have you got now? Um, 13. 13. Oh my goodness. It's a good job we're on lockdown, otherwise, you'd need new shoes. Right. So I'm cutting out my feet. Are you doing all right? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Lovely. Brilliant. Now, obviously, you would take more time with this than that. Because you've got all the time. You've, you've got no, there's no rush. So now, we've got two tootsies. They look good. I'm going to draw some toenails on them. Okay, I'm drawing toenails on that one and that one. Again, I'm rushing. A little bit of detail. So you could do loads of detail. You could um, you could even put toe rings on or tattoos or hair, hairy toes. Okay, there you go. That's my very quick sketch of a toe. Or a foot, rather, five toes. Right, I'll do the same on the other foot. Oops. Giving that one a bit of a short nail, I think. All right, so that's five toes. Okay, is there a pretty stick, please, sweetheart? Thank you. 
See, I thought we planned everything, but apparently we haven't. So I've now got two feet. There we go, that way around. Okay. And uh, this plate, the um, the bowl of water has now been painted beautifully. Thank you, my darling. We have our glue stick. And we are going to glue our feet onto our plate. Just so they look like they're dipping the toes in. There we go. And then I've got this little strap of uh, material that I found. This is actually somebody's old school uniform. Um, and that could be used as the cloth to wash or the towel to dry. So I'm just going to fold that up like that. And then put that next to there. There we go. So now we have our feet being washed. What might be a really nice thing for everyone to do is to actually wash somebody else's feet. It's a very funny sensation having your feet washed by somebody else. Uh, sometimes people like chiropodists, they might wash your feet before they cut your toenails. But it's not very often that we wash each other's feet, is it? Um, sometimes mummies and daddies, they wash their baby's feet or their toddler's feet to make sure they're nice and clean, especially if they've been playing in the mud in the summer or they've been outside. But it's not something that we do. So maybe you could take some time and ask somebody that you love in the house, can I wash your feet? And then you can find out how it feels for you to serve them. And then they can tell you how it felt for them to have their feet washed by you. Funny experience. And that's what Jesus did. He washed his disciples' feet, which was very good of him. So that's our plate. What else have we got? Let's have a look. Right. Now this next activity is really, it might be for mums and dads and some of the older children. It's napkin dyeing. Move that paint out of the way. Where's our, there we go, where's our napkins? Now, so if anyone can see that, it is a tie dye cross, which is kind of cool. Uh, we found this on Pinterest. Now, we used a napkin, and I will be honest, our napkins are quite thin. So we think it would be better to use a thicker kitchen roll. Um, because when we did it, it kept sticking, didn't it? And then when we were trying to unroll it, unpeel it, it was tearing, which was a nuisance. So all you need is a napkin or some kitchen roll. <coughs> Sounds like we're in a pub, doesn't it? And some food colour. Okay, I've mixed this with a little bit of water and a little bit of vinegar. But if you've got any dyes left over from your Easter eggs, you can use. Brilliant. Now, concentrate on this bit. We struggled, didn't we? It took us a while to get going. Thank you. First of all, you need a napkin or a piece of kitchen roll. Not a square. It needs to be a rectangle. Okay? So you've got a little bit of a rectangle going on. I'm going to try and do this so everyone can see. So the first thing we do is we take this corner up to this side to make a triangle. Okay? So that corner has come up to here. Right, next we're going to take this corner and bring it up to here. So we make another triangle. Am I doing it right? which now looks like this. Okay, so you've got, that's the foldy bit there, and then that's the spare bit at the top. Right, now this point, we're gonna take straight up. Kind of like that. All right, now we're going to fold it in half from the flat bit, this flat bit at the back, not that bit, that bit, we're gonna fold it in half. Now this is the really important bit because we kept doing this wrong. You need to have that bit pointing upwards. Not the bit where it's a square, but that X 
extra little triangle bit at the top pointing upwards. And then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to be brave. We are going to cut here. Straight up. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do it so you can see. Okay, straight up. Right. Pass me the dice. Now we've tried to dip them in, and I think with a kitchen towel, which is stronger, that would work better. So what we're going to do is we're going to dab it on. We're going to dab the colour on with a paintbrush. Madam, pick a colour. We're just going to drip it. Come on, Put drip on. Lovely. Other side. All of West Arty is waiting to see if it works or not. I think the green probably could have been a bit darker, but okay. Oh, we missed a bit there. Look, I've got a bit blue from there. Right, so we've dripped, dripped some, dripped some stop bird dye on it. Now I'm going to unfold it really carefully, hopefully. out tearing it is it going to come out as a cross is it going to come as a cross or not it's going to play sound mm. don't know is it is it is it <gasps> Ta -da! there we go it is a cross are you impressed i'm impressed that that worked because it doesn't always if you have if you fold it the wrong way round and cut it, it just ends up as a big square with a square missing in the middle. So that's why you have to have it the right way around. Should we do it again? Okay, let's pop that one down there. Well, thank you very much, young lady. Okay, so rectangle shape. We're going to bring this corner to here. Right, like that. Then we're going to bring this point to here where my fingers are. Sided already. There we go. So we now look like it's a pointy hanky. This point goes straight up. Okay, I think actually that's a little bit. Uh, I'm going to chop a wee bit off the end of this. Okay. So we've got the the point is pointing upwards, up here. And then you've got your little bunny ear flop in there. Right. Now I'm going to fold it over on the flat side like that. And remember, we don't want that bit folding up. We want that bit pointing up. So it's the triangle at the top that points up, not that bit. If you cut that way, if you cut there, it won't work. It has to be there and you need to cut there in a straight line. And that's what we're going to do. So we are going to cut here. Ready? Should we try and dip it in, see if that works? Might not, might not work, simply because it's too, um... oh, blimey. I'm going to have yellow fingers now. Right, let's see if we can unfold it. See, this is the problem, because it gets all wet, and then we can't unfold it properly. Oh no. Ah! Dropped it. Ruined it. Ruined it. Oh. Yellow stained coffee table. Although, to be honest, the coffee table's do with the restand anyway because it's get covered. Yeah. Oh, I think we've torn it. I think I've torn it. Oh no. Very tricky to do when it's wet and yellow. Right, okay, that one didn't work. <clears throat> Pin that one. 
try it again. Because this one I prepared earlier. Right. So I'm going to cut it again. I'd already folded this one, so I'm going to cut that up. Right. Let's just dip the one side, or two sides, like that. Okay? Not the rest of it. Right. Okay. I know, I know. That was a big breath, wasn't it? <gasps> That's going to work either. So I've got all these people wanting to watch how to do stuff and we're making a mess of it. Or am I making a mess of it? Oh, oh. It's getting there. There we go. Yeah. The napkins are definitely too thin. I would say, but there you go. There we go, see? It's a very wet pink napkin. It can be done. I would probably use kitchen roll, which is much better. Okay. You can see how thin it is, because you can see my fingers through it, can't you? Right, well, we leave those to dry and see how that turns out. <sighs> so, what have we done? Let's have a look. Now, all the big kids out there, who likes Lego? Little kids like Lego? Yeah. Everyone likes Lego? We like Lego. What would be really cool is to see what you can do with your Lego. Uh, we've made, well, my helper has made a fabulous long after supper. Yeah. Is there any food on the table yet? The table, I don't know if they've just, they're waiting to be served or they've just finished and they're all rubbing their tummies. But I think there's 13 people. Fabulous, that's 12 disciples, is that right? Yeah. It's a very long table, isn't it? I would love to see what you can do. So go away and have a look at your Lego, see what you can do, um, and then come back with pictures, please. That'd be awesome. Right, we are going to have a 10 minute break, and then we're going to come back, and then we're going to show you um, how to do this and a story box, which is here. Um, so we do hope that you can come and join us again in a moment. So we're going to have 10 minutes, um, so we'll just get a drink, because um, you're probably bored with this already. We'll see you soon.